is upon us and it is a heck of a lot more full of exciting Switch releases than Q1 and we're here to give you our list of the top 10 quarter two Nintendo Switch games. What's going on everybody? It's Zach from Switch Force. Gabe is here and man, it was actually tougher than we thought to whittle this list down. Even though the heavy hitters are being saved for the second half, it seems, a lot of really interesting, really exciting and by all accounts, really awesome games hitting the platform in the months of April, May, and June. Yeah, we're going to go in chronological order here. So if you are maybe waiting for a game uh, and you haven't like heard it, maybe it's coming up. And uh, with that, I guess we can start off with the one that's coming out the soonest and the one we're probably most excited for just because it's so novel and different. And that is obviously Nintendo Labo, both the, uh, the variety pack and the robo kit. We are pumped as all heck. To not only build, to not only try and break, but to also play. Just everything about it is fascinating. It's almost like a mini hardware launch. Obviously, it will not have that level of impact, but it, it is just such an oddity. And I think that's what makes it so awesome. Uh, it's only 10 days away at this point, which is madness that we're already going to be that close uh, to Labo and to April and you know to them the rest of these games. But we've said plenty about Labo. I don't know how much it moves the needle one way or the other, but it definitely is just intriguing and it's going to be super interesting to see how it all plays out once we hit uh, release date yeah 10 more days not that much of a wait hopefully you guys are just as excited as we are we'll bring you those uh those time lapses of those four hour builds uh but a game that has taken more than four hours to hit switch but still is a very notable title is south park the fractured but whole it hits on april 24th and even though it is a game that you may not associate with Nintendo's typically family-friendly branding, it's great to see on the platform. It is a quality product, and I know a lot of people are pumped to play it either for the first time or to play it again, and Gabe, you're one of them. Yeah, this is going to be the first time for me. I love The Stick of Truth. I thought that was actually a pretty good game. And uh, this one has a re more refined battle mechanic system and like the story that kind of uh, riffs on like a certain Marvel property a little bit. Yeah, I, I'm excited to try it out. It's important to have third-party support on the Switch, so something like this coming, I think it's impactful. Yeah, and it's it's awesome that Ubisoft uh, is continuing to push, and I hope that this uh, helps them fund or helps them secure another awesome exclusive uh, or, or bigger new day-and-date ports in the second half. In the meantime, though, I'm going to be playing Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze on May the 4th. Okay, may the 4th be with you. And, and by saying that, I mean, will you be with me and play some Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze co-op? Yes, why not? Uh, I want to be Funky Kong, though. <laughs> he makes the game all but, like, the most easiest thing from what we hear. Uh, we did see footage of Funky Kong being played during PAX. Uh, I'm excited for it. This is another game that, since I wasn't such a, a big supporter of the Wii U, I missed out on. So having, like, an opportunity to replay this, I did play it a little bit. But I'm going to, like, seriously dive into this one. I'm excited uh, to take this one on the go because it's a perfect type of game for that. Uh, I'm, I'm hyped for this. I beat the original uh, when it released. I, I beat it in co-op, actually, with Jake. And it is a very challenging, very beyond well-made platformer. Um, I'm, I'm excited to play it again just because it's that quality and the levels are that interesting. I'm not sure I'm going to be doing the, the Funky Kong thing just because I don't, I don't like knowing that the game is, make, is being made easier. Um, but some of those bonus stages are brutal as all hack, and it's just one of those things almost like the B-sides of Celeste where you want to accomplish it just to say you did. Um, so not really looking forward to uh, necessarily the price point, but definitely looking forward to playing it on Switch. And the next one, Gabe, another game I've beat and another first-timer for you. That's Little Nightmares Complete Edition hitting on May 18th. This, honestly, is probably the one I'm most hyped for out of the entire list, if I'm being 100% uh, honest. It has limbo vibes. It has a very creepy atmosphere, the, the like... I don't even know what to call them. Are they creatures or are they <laughs> whatever they are? The nightmares, I guess. They, they're they so like eerie and, and they give you like this weird vibe that I absolutely dig. Um, I love games like this. The atmosphere is like the most apparent thing here. And I'm excited for, yeah. to play it because I know you loved it. I absolutely adored it. I think it has a phenomenal ending. I think it is all sorts of creepy. Um, 
you know, if I can describe the the boss encounters that Gabe is mentioning, it's basically like Muppets gone wrong. I feel like, you know, the the Muppets kind of like got stuck on this ship and everything went bad for them and this is what this is what came out of that forgotten time. Um it it's not horror in the traditional sense of like jump scares and stuff, but there is almost a it, it's so charming, but so it doesn't seem like a match, but almost like a sadistic nature about some of the the the, the characters in the game and, and what they're out to do and just sort of the the overall concept and the overall point the game's trying to make. Um, this is the complete edition, so it's going to include the DLC, something I never played, uh, so that is what I will be targeting, but nonetheless, it is a a gem. Um, I think it was one of the, the best indie titles of last year, and it made my overall top 10 games of the year list, so it's, it's a good get for Switch. And another great get for Switch, I wish it was Virtual Console, but it's not. Mega Man Legacy Collection 1 Plus 2 hits on May 22nd, and that is bringing a whole lot of nostalgic NES and SNES glory uh, to the little hybrid that could. Yeah, while deciding the games that were going to be all this, on the list, you pointed out that this is like the perfect portable uh, game. It's going to look great on that handheld screen, and yeah, you're probably going on the D-pad. <laughs> That's the only thing that, that mm-hmm. uh, is a little off-putting, but playing with a pro controller is also a super viable solution. Uh, if you do buy it physically, you get a Mega Man Collection uh, 1 on a cartridge, and then you have to download Collection 2, so do be wary right. of that, but a ton of really, really awesome games, some bona fide classics in this one. Yeah, and I, I will probably be targeting the later games uh, in the franchise. Um, I never fully beat 10, so that's one that I'm I'm excited for, um, and there's just, like you said, 7 is one that I really like, uh, and there, it's, it's, it's just like... A, when you think about the Switch and what it kind of stands for and how it can be, and you're thinking of sort of that like old game space, like Mega Man just instantly comes to mind. So fantastic that we're finally getting it. Personally, I am super pumped for the new X Collection, but we don't have a date. And then, hey, you got Mega Man 11 uh, loading up later this fall. In the meantime, though, you can play another game on 522. That is, that's the date to beat, baby. Runner 3 hits both digitally and physically on May 22nd. Great games. This one looks to be the best yet. They have these strange... Um, like retro stages that are very much channeling like Cuphead or something of that sort. Awesome aesthetic, and hopefully they have brought some new things to the table gameplay-wise. It is exclusively releasing on Switch, uh, and to me that's a big deal as well. Yeah, I mean, that is a perfect example of the power of the Switch now. You get like some of these franchises that maybe haven't been around in some time. You bring them over to Switch exclusively, and they can do like really, really well. I'm excited for this one. Uh, and I guess just to clarify, that's console exclusive on Switch. It's also coming to uh, PC. Yeah. But for, for for the platforms that we typically discuss, hey, it's exclusive. Um, and hey, uh, your boy, Charles Martinet, is the narrator in Runner 3. So the voice of Mario up in Runner 3, it's a, it's a, it's going to be, it's going to be a good time. Uh, yeah. You might not have time, though, because May 22nd is also Dark Souls Remastered, one of the third-party titles that we have been most excited for, and I think one of the most special announcements that we've seen thus far this year. That direct reveal was absolutely epic, and they are bringing the classic to the platform. Now, it's going to be absolutely amazing to play Dark Souls on the go. We've started to see footage. We've seen some previews. A little bit of mixed response there, but I still think... Getting to play this game on the go, it's a special moment for me just because of how invested I've been in the franchise and what the franchise has meant for me uh, as as a gamer and also as a YouTuber. I know this is one that is going to really, I think, sell incredibly well on Switch. Yeah, I mean, you mentioned that we've seen some of the footage. The PAX footage uh, showed, like, you know, certain areas that weren't super playable before on the past consoles now be totally good uh, for the most part. And, of course, we're getting the increase in... uh, you know, the FPS from 30 to 60. And as you say, the the reception has been a little bit mixed, but I think that's just because people are, like, expecting this, like, insane thing. But, hey, it looks better, it runs better, and you can take it on the go. And that's all I can ask for. For sure. And one thing I'll point out briefly is I think that you think of Dark Souls 1, 2, and 3 in quick succession, and in my mind they blend together often, but you really, like, until you look at them, you forget how, like, how good something like Dark Souls 3 looked or, or Bloodborne looked in comparison to the original. Nonetheless, like, I hope it controls and feels good uh, handheld. I'm a little wary, but 
still, that's such an epic day with Mega Man Legacy Collection 1 plus 2, Runner 3, and Dark Souls Remastered. Doesn't get much better than that. Um, and the week continues strong with Pixel Joint Monsters 2 on May 25th. This is a personal pick uh, for me because I love the originals so much. They're bringing four-player co-op this time around. It's got an updated graphical style. And, you know, it's hitting day and date and Switch. It's not a major um, release, but I feel like the Pixel Joint franchise had a lot of clout last gen. And the fact that they're bringing it back and bringing it to Switch means a lot, and I'm very, very excited to dive into this one uh, with you, Gabe. Yeah, Pixel Junk um, have always been like great games. A lot of reason to be excited here. All righty. We're done with May and moving to the final month of the quarter, which is June, and which is also filled very heavily uh, by a, a little convention known as E3. But that doesn't stop the games from coming. Two picks from us for this month. 615 has LEGO The Incredibles. The movie comes out. The game chronicles both films, and it's day and date. You know, Warner Brothers and Traveler Tales have always done, you know, real good on on us Nintendo fans by releasing their games day and date, bringing a lot of their their older Lego games. Um, still waiting on the the confirmation of that that three pack that has been sort of rumored out there. Um, but for now, I'm really excited for this. It's cool to see a Disney property enter the fray um, that isn't, you know, Marvel Star Wars, more of a, of a secondary property, but like a main Pixar Disney thing. I think that's going to be very cool. Um, hey, you know, we're still waiting on Kingdom Hearts 3, but you can get a little bit of, of Disney love from Lego Incredibles. Yeah, and this is a game that just fits the the, the entire mission statement of Switch so perfectly, right? Because it's going to offer that local uh, co-op. It's going to offer that family-friendly fun. And again, it's going to incentivize you to probably go see the movie. This is going to be a good tie-in, I think. Absolutely. Uh, our last pick, you know, you said that you're most pumped for um, Little Nightmares. I have to go with Mario Tennis Aces. I think the fact that they have fleshed that game out in such a fantastic fashion, you know, I was a little miffed when they were like, oh, we're going to dedicate a major portion of the most recent Direct to Mario Tennis Aces, but it was well-deserved. Like, they showed off a whole lot of cool features. There is depth and complexity there, and they are bringing in a campaign mode. I think this one is going to be a, a stealth superstar in the summer it's the week after e3 we're going to get real pumped about a bunch of games and then nintendo is going to drop a heavy hitter that doesn't look like a heavy hitter but i mean tennis puns aside i really think it's going to be a really great game yeah well this is honestly like my runner up for the game i'm most excited for um yeah, the the inter well not the introduction the reintroduction I guess of single player stuff and the way they're doing it uh, and the online of course this time is going to be something to to keep an eye on. Um, I'm excited to lose to you and Mario Tennis <laughs> quite a bit. Yeah, that's it seems so far away, but you know we are moving through these months quickly. Labo ten days away, Mario Tennis aces. Two and a half months away, but we'll be there before you know it. Gabe, I want your pick for which of these games you think is going to review the best and which of these games you think is going to sell the best. Well, this is a little bit of a tricky question reviewing-wise because, you know, some some of these games have been out, right? So so we know right. that Donkey Kong is a good game. We know Little Nightmares is a really, really good game. And that's the one I'm going to go with, Little Nightmares. I think that game is... For the most part, pretty easy to port over. Again, I don't know development, but it seems like it'll run and it's going to feel right at home on here. So that's the one I think is in review the best. What was the second question? Sell the best. Sell the best. I am going to go with, well, it's hard to go with against something that has Mario in the name, right? So Mario Tennis Aces. Yeah, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go a little, I'll differ a little bit there. Um, I think that, you know, something tells me that the port of Dark Souls may hurt the review scores a little bit. So I'm actually going with Donkey Kong Tropical Freeze pulling the best critical score. Um, it, it got mid-8s when it came out, but I, I feel like the second time around with more exposure and not the baggage of the Wii U, it's going to review just as high or higher. Um, Sales-wise, I'm going to go with... Um, I'm going to go with Dark Souls, though. You know, I, I think that, that, that franchise and that game um, can push a lot, and we saw how well... Um, you know, stuff like Skyrim did, and as great of a game as I expect it to be, I still feel like tennis may be a little, a little niche for, for the, the major audience, uh, but we'll see. Maybe they'll surprise, and let us know if you're surprised by our list, or if you agree what game you think we missed out on, or what game you are most excited for in Q2. Let us know. There are definitely some notable exceptions. It was hard. We had a list of 30 games that we, uh, we slowly chiseled down to 10, um, so if you didn't see your favorite here, no worries. We're still excited for quite a few others. Um, these are just our favorite 10 games. 
that are coming in Q2. So let us know yours in the comments down below. Thanks so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all the latest and greatest from the Switch and the slate for quarter two, quarter three, quarter four, quarter one, quarter two. You, you get the picture. Follow us on Twitter and Discord. Links in the description below. And until next time, thanks so much for watching. We love you. Have a great day. For myself and Gabe, Switch Force out.